Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Visible You Inside the Visibility for Homestagers and Real Estate Agents Facebook group. Super excited to be here. I'm your host, Tori Toth. And with me today, I have a very special man. We are about to be blowing your mind when it comes to marketing today. He is a tech savvy millennial who speaks from the heart and specializes in helping everyone improve their tech expertise. Very interesting. Regardless of skill level or generational differences, um, he engages in audiences with high energy comedic performances, so get ready to laugh. And there are infused with relative stories from his real life experience as a real estate practitioner for almost 14 years. So he has a fresh perspective on everything, and I can't wait to introduce you to Jeremiah J. Man Monero. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Tori. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I don't know what we're talking about today, but it's going to be exciting. Well, okay, let's let's start from the beginning. So, yeah. how did you get? Let's. How did you get into real estate? Uh, I started in real estate 2005. I was a business owner, entrepreneur. I owned a, a cell phone store and a, an alarm company, actually. And when I moved, I moved from New York City to back to Rochester, where I was originally from. And I had a, a real estate agent that wasn't that great and was very successful. And I was like, dude, if this guy can do it, I can do it too. And so that's that's what made me uh, get into it because I felt like, look, at I have a high level of service. I know about technology. Um, and, and I'm really... Uh, in that previous career, I did a lot of door knocking, prospecting in that. So I, I thought all I had to do was learn real estate. I had all the other parts already kind of developed or I could just develop them towards real estate. So, of course, you're a man with my heart because you love video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. We had both loved video way before it was cool, right? I mean, like, we've been like, yeah. do video, do video. And then the pandemic hit and everybody's like, how do I do video? Hi, man, you should have been listening to us all these years. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, st I started early, like in real estate, I was 25 years old and I saw video as a way to kind of build a brand, have people you know, be more visible in, in the market. Uh, when I ran for my local board, a uh, real estate board, it, it, video was the way that I got out there and said, hey, this is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero, I give you a forward fresh thinking perspective uh, with technology and video and blah, blah, blah. And that was the way then when I would go to events, people would go, hey, you're that guy, that J-man person. And I'd go, all because yeah. they saw the video, you know, and, and it was a great way um, just to really show people who I am. I'm not, an, I don't want to say I'm not a normal person, but I'm not a normal person, you know, like my energy and it's not for everybody. Uh, but if it is for you, then you're like, oh, that's my dude, you know, so it's, kind of pre-filters my prospects, if you will. What do you find is like the biggest hang up for real estate agents when it comes to marketing themselves? Um, getting over your yourself or themselves, right? I think it's uh, too often the real estate's so image-based. HGTV makes that worse. We're like, we're these rich people getting out of these expensive cars and money falling out of our pockets. And it, it, if you don't fit that mold of what, the stereotypical agent is then you don't have the the esteem or the confidence to be like just putting yourself out there um and and, and the other fear is like people aren't going to like me people aren't going to like what it, the way i look the way i sound and more importantly what i say uh, I, I hear that so often from agents going well what if i say the wrong thing i'm like it's your opinion it can never be the wrong thing if it's your if you just go well in my opinion i feel like the real estate market might insert you know your opinion here who cares? And I think uh, once you get to that point of, you know, you have zero more uh, foxes to give, you know, to use an animal reference, um, <laughs> <laughs> zero fox to give, then you could just do what you do, what you want to do, say what you want to say. And, and that kind of freedom is liberating. And people will see that and go, man, I like that person. I think that's the thing that it, people get scared of what should they be saying? Um, even in, even in home staging too, when they're, when they're talking to agents and I, I agree every, if everyone just kind of got out of their own way, we'd Absolutely. have a much better community. <laughs> well, and it's, it's, there's no substitute for confidence, right? If, if, even if somebody's, it's their first day in the business, like 
Will you help me? Sell? I can help you sell your house rather than going, well, you know, like I can do my best. I've only been in the business a couple of days. And, uh, you know, it's, it, if, if you're confident in what you're going to do, what you're going to say and, and your results based, it's not, I think I can, I might, I'll try. It's like, I will, you know, I can, I will end of story. I think, uh, you're going to go places regardless of the industry. And I think if you're a stager talking to a realtor, same thing. It's like, it's not staging can help you sell the home for more money. It's staging will, you know, the, the statistics are theirs. Uh, I think the last time they ran, it was over a 400% return on investment. So even, even in a seller's market, why wouldn't you? Because then you're still demonstrating how you're going above and beyond for your clients to get the most money possible. Oh my goodness. We were just talking about this. This is like a whole sidetrack thing, but so many stagers are having, so many stagers are having issues with getting agents on board because of the hot market right now. They don't think that they need staging. My opinion so is what should they do? J man, give them some yeah. advice. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, <laughs> I think it's important to, you know, partner with the right agents because too often we spend time with the wrong prospects. Like if somebody doesn't get it, okay. They're probably gonna be out of business. And you know, after this hot market is gone, they'll be out of here. If somebody has to grasp your concept of what you're talking about, but then also just saying like, for me, I have one level of service. If I lift list a property in, in the city of Rochester, let's say for $70,000, they're going to get the same level of service as somebody that lists a luxury property for 500 same level because if people can see now I, I always like to saying like how you do anything is how you do everything so if i if i have staging i got photos i got the video i got everything on a fifty thousand dollar listing you're gonna be like damn i want to use him for my luxury home if he goes that level of service so i think if you're spending time with short-sighted agents who don't see the value just find new agents just, you know don't don't waste your energy on somebody who um, is unconsciously incompetent, which means they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. That's right. It's really hard to try and get people to know things. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. So but that's what you were saying too. Like, this is why I always tell people to go back to video because you can be using this as a sales tool and getting people to like know who you are and understand what it is you do without physically having to be face to face. Um, so how are you using videos in your real in, in, in your business right now? Well, it's, it's part of it is, is educational. And I like to use, you know, somebody told me the five E's and I can't remember all five E's, so I'm not going to say, <laughs> but it's engagement, education, uh, entertaining. And then there's two more E's that to, to be determined later on. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what they are, but the most, the two most important is like educational, right? Cause you do want to, uh, there's a portion there were like, okay, yeah. Tell me about your business. Tell me what you do. Tell me how I should learn about the process. But then there's also like the entertainment factor. There's so much c content for us to consume everywhere. And if I don't look at what you're doing and going, shoot, I almost said shit. I could say shit. It doesn't matter, right? Um, I almost said, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and if I look at yours, yours and I'm like, I like her like as a person, right? I like her personality and all that. And then if I like your content second, I'm in. But I, I like the people first before I even listen to what, because you could have the best content on the planet. If I'm going, damn, this dude or this guy or this gal is annoying or I don't like how serious they are. Or how like, Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about home staging or hi, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about the home sale process. Uh, if you're a first time home buyer, gone. I'm not even getting to the important part. It could be, the, right? It could be the best video ever. But if you don't edutain me, right? entertain and educate me at the same time that I'm probably not going to keep consuming your content, your content. And I think that's how I, I first came on to one of your videos and you don't think you even know this. I used to show it in a class I did on video years before we ever met on like ways that you can build content that educates clients, but was also engaging. I think it was like a staging one that you did and it had you coming out of like 
a house and then it had you. I should find it because it was probably 10 years ago that you did it. Oh, but, God. you know, but it, that video said, okay, she's approachable. She's knowledgeable, right? I see with interacting with clients. I see that dynamic. All of that is, is everything that you do. It's not just, here's the process. Let me educate you on it. Yeah, no, I so important to be even showing and telling when you're using video because it's like that's the whole medium that's that's the reason why you want to be using video in the first place so a lot of people have no idea what kind of content to create so let's talk about some pillars of contents I bum, think we bum, need, bum. hold on yeah we need some dramatic <laughs> there you go dramatic. Here for you um, let's see, pillars of content. I can go to the whiteboard. Let me go to the whiteboard. Here I go. Ooh, we're going oh, to the whiteboard. I'm going to be away from the mic, so, so you uh, you can voice over me as I walk over there, okay? Okay. He's taking his left and right step over to the whiteboard. <laughs> what, are we, what are we going to be building here? The pillars of content, everyone. Uh oh, you froze. Okay. No, you didn't. You're good. You froze. <laughs> Week one, two, three, and four. Loving it. We need some music to this. <laughs> so, week one would be about sellers. Week two could be about buyers. Week three could be a video. Um, week four can be social. Okay. <clears throat> you got me? I love it. I, I, feel like you be singing, I feel like you should be singing like talk of Shane right now. <laughs> Darling, talk of Shane. All right. So listen, um, that was a great voiceover, by the way. Thank you for segue, segue, segue. But here's what it. And, and somebody told me this, we all don't have enough of a following right now to dictate to our followers what they should be learning, right? Yeah. Like somebody like Gary Vee could go, this is the content I'm putting out and you're going to consume it because I got freaking 10 million, 12 million people following me every day. We're not there yet. Uh, Tori does have over a million YouTube views, but she still can't do that. She has to look at the analytics on the backside and go, okay, rather than me... You know, we do speculate, but then you also have to look at the insights and say, what is my audience interacting with? And the only way to do that is pillars of content. So that when I say this, so it's like first week might be a, a seller tip for staging your home. Uh, the second week might be buyers uh, staging. When you buy your 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 first home, right? How to in decorate that interior. It's a fresh slate or whatever. Then you might give real estate agents tips on video because why wouldn't you? We want to know more about than just the staging process, but for realtors, same Even thing. Photography, yeah. Video yeah, or photography. for photography or getting it ready for the photos or the video. And then, you know, it can never hurt to give tips on social media, but you decide what your four pillars of content are, but it's one week, two week, three week, four week, and then rinse and repeat. And you keep doing that. And then you have to look at your insights and go, give it 90 days and say, shit, man, the seller tips are really really working. Maybe you expand that now into, you know, two segments of seller tips to see what works better. Yeah. You know, what, 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 how do you do it with your content creation, Tori? Back to you um, at the studio. Yes. Back to me at the studio. So I have, what I do is I theme uh, usually my month and then I break um, each week up into a subtopic and we'll do either a video or blog around that um, subtopic. And then do you, I have, do you like So on my blog alone, I have lots of different pillars of content from organizing to cleaning, to staging, to decorating, to entertaining, to, um, you know, video marketing. Um, so it kind of, I've got a lot of different buckets that I can pull from. And so where do you determine those buckets? Do you go to like um, like FAQs that people ask you over the years or how to, and now I'm asking you questions. Um, <laughs> how, how do you, how do you find those? 
Because I think this is so great because it's like content is so hard. It's so, if you're not a creative type and you just want to go every day and just create something without thinking about it, you know, where do you find it? Yeah, well, I mean, I go and I, I do like a search on YouTube too and even Google to see what, um, to see what comes up what content comes up around there and what I could pull from. Um, like you said, go back through my analytics a lot of times and pull content from there. Um, people ask questions, so I'll do that. Or even going to like BuzzSumo and these other different sites that have more of a queue for people mm -hmm. to ask questions and get answers. Um, you know, Pinterest a lot too, because Pinterest is oh, yeah. such a great platform, but it's not as visual as it needs to be yet. So taking a piece of content from over there and be like, well, how can I make this visual um, over here and make it and make it more engaging? Yeah, that's... Um, what do you do? <laughs> I don't know what I do, really. No, I, I try to think of what I'm doing as I get different questions throughout the week. Uh, and actually recently I, I've just joined clubhouse cause I'm an Android user. Clubhouse is great. You want to talk about for content creation. If you don't want to get on stage and talk, that's one thing, but you should, because if you want to be seen as a subject matter expert in your field, just get over yourself and talk. Now they don't care how you look cause they can't see you. But if you, yeah. if you just get there and listen, you'll hear all of the gripes. Uh, you just sit there, go into a real estate networking group and go, do you know, what do you think about this? And you just got to sit there and take notes. Now you have content creation ideas because it's literally the pulse of the real estate market, what people are saying at that time. Uh, or you can go to a, like a site like askthepublic.com. That'll give you, if you just did real estate sale, it'll give you all of the popular search queries and they'll be uh, more or less popular. It'll tell you like, uh, sell my house, why? how to get best value. You know how people search for Google. It's not in complete sentences. Yeah. It's like a, a caveman would, would search. So house now, why stage? <laughs> right. And that will be like, something. Be happy they can actually spell the words inside of Google. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's so true. Uh, but, and, and somebody else told me this, a, a, a YouTuber with, with a, a lot of subscribers, create a ghost YouTube account, meaning, uh, just a phantom account where you follow your field, like home staging, and then see the recommendations that YouTube makes to you and then rip off and duplicate. Like if you see a staging video, that's you're like, damn, this has got 20,000 views and pfft, it needs, you know, it has a lot of potential. I don't want to say it sucks. It has a lot of potential for improvement and it has 20,000 views that maybe let me do a similar concept with me as the subject and doing the same kind of subject matter so that you could also be found for that same search query as that video that wasn't that great in your opinion. Yep. That won't be any of Tori's videos, obviously, because hers rock out. <laughs> working on it, working on my contents again. Well, you know, you're an overnight success, like 15 years in the making. Yeah. <laughs> you always say that. Oh my gosh, it came out of nowhere. I'm like, no, she's been working hard, man. She's been working hard for a long time. I think that's yeah. Or something for everybody else to think of is like to be consistent because you're not. When people talk about grinding, it's like the real grind is doing this again and again and again, and not seeing a direct result. Like you got to trust the process and know that if you keep it on, you will. You're eventually going to go to a staging appointment or a listing appointment or a buyer appointment. They're going to go. You know, I watch all of your videos, Tori, and you're going to go, well, shoot, you could at least like or comment because there's some days I have really low self-esteem because I am not getting, <laughs> I am not getting the love that I want. That's, that's the way I feel, right? You do this, you put your heart and soul into a video. It could take, you know, some, if it's a minute video, it could take hours, guys, yeah. hours to put this together. And then like you post it and you're like this waiting. And then it's like crickets, right? You just hear crickets and, and, and that is so, it hurts your soul. It does. <laughs> so comments are like below and ask us a question because we're here for you. Um, That's right. Let's talk about consistency a little bit. How do you stay consistent? I, I add it to my calendar. I say yes to collaboration opportunities like this. 
Um, I, I won't even think twice. I even, you know, somebody asked me, what kind of content should I create? I don't know. Let's do an interview style and I'll be your first interview, right? Like uh, it's, it's put it in your calendar. Always say yes. Even when you're a hundred percent uncomfortable, uh, I have found the greatest opportunities are on the other side of that, that fear of like, oh man, it's a new audience. Like the first time I, I spoke with you in front of stagers, I'm like, I'm not a stager. They're going to, they're going to eat me up, you know, like and then I've, now I'm just okay. Like I'm giving you my opinion from my perspective. Uh, as much as I can do that, the more that you can get out there, the more you can help other people. Uh, but, but really scheduling it on a weekly basis. If when you just start thinking of your pillars of content, then it's like, okay, Monday is going to be my video day. If that's a good day for you on Monday from nine to 10, I'm going to make a video. It's not, I'm going to try, I'm going to maybe do it. If I don't have anything else, like you put it in there and you do the damn thing, <laughs> right? Cause if not, you're going to be like, I don't feel like it. Cause we all have days. We don't feel like doing videos. I have like yep. four videos to make after this. I don't really feel up to it, but I will because I've scheduled the videos. So I yeah, think schedule it is committed, right? How, um, I think it's really important too, because there's real estate agents and home stagers in here. It's, it's, finding ways to collaborate to bring the message, you know, from both parties across the board. So um, the real estate agent doesn't have to necessarily come up with the home staging information, just team up with a home stager and have them give you the information and vice versa. Home stagers, go find yourself an agent. So they just have a different community or different outlet to share their information too. And I think that's super important too. I think people miss that when it comes to marketing and just online marketing in general. Yeah. I think if you're watching this, if you're a home stager and you want somebody to partner with, to do an interview style video, put it in the comments. If you're a realtor looking for a home stager to partner with, to collaborate, to do some kind of interview style video, put it in the comments. We'll match make you together and you guys can do video content. Together. And, and really, the, if you are afraid, this is the best place to start because both Tori and I don't have to carry the entire conversation, right? As I segue to the whiteboard, she can, oh, Jeremiah is walking. I feel like he should sing a little. And it, it really helps to, that banter back and forth will help you get through it because it's not easy to start with to just go live and just be able to talk for 30 yeah. minutes. That's a skill just like any other skill. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll, you'll feel with it. Tori spent thousands of hours doing it. Um, just know that you can focus on progress, not perfection. Oh, there you go. And I love that you're wearing blue. It matches my, how'd you know? Well, I, I looked up your brand colors and then I had a custom t-shirt made. <laughs> this is not my brand color. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is not the right shade of blue. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. I was just kidding. Um, so consistency for you is just putting it in the calendar and sticking to the calendar, no matter yeah, what. I, I live and die by the calendar. If it's in there, it's going to get done. Uh, because if it's something you don't like doing or are a little bit scared of, you'll find any other reason in the world. You'll be like, oh, I have to uh, uh, listing appointment that I, I'll meet you at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is your camera time, right? Your make video time. You're going to purposely schedule that other appointment at that time so that you miss the thing that you didn't want to do. And sometimes the things that you avoid are what's going to have the biggest impact on your business. This is what I tell, I like, cause everyone, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of new members in here. So welcome new members. And a lot of them um, have said that they have um, time management issues and that they don't do marketing because of time management. And it's exactly, this is it. This is how you need to do it. What J-Man is suggesting Put it in your schedule, and then that's a priority. That's scheduled. That's a priority. It's something that you have to do, um, and you can't just schedule over it because uh, the other task might have some monetary value to it. This one does too. It just might not be making you monetary. It might not be making you money right away. Right. Yeah. I do, too many times we spend, uh, spend time working in our business rather than on our business, and marketing is such a crit critical part of that. And really, if you are a business owner and you say to somebody, I can at that time, I, like 
when I first started in real estate, I'd be like, oh, I'll show you a house. Yeah, anytime. But now it's like, no, I've, I have another appointment at the time, whether that's video or that's going to the gym, or that's going to my son's soccer game. All of those are important things in my calendar that won't get moved because I'm a business owner and I control my own schedule. Yes. Hallelujah. So many times. Yes. Yeah, Sage was like, but the agent said, I was like, no, value your own time in your own time frame as well. Like, like so think well, of it for a second. If, if, if I called the Sage, just to give you my perspective, I called Tori and she's like, like Tori, I get this listing appointment tomorrow at one o'clock. And Tori's like, yeah, I have another appointment at that time. Well, I have my listing appointment at one o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can go by there at two o'clock when I finish mine, if that's okay with you, or I can go the next day if that's better. You don't necessarily have to be there if you want to fill me in on what you discussed so we can be in line. Uh, that would work well. Right. So, so you're still collaborating as a, as a real estate agent. If I trust you and we're working together, I don't want to hold your hand. I want to be like, Tori, you're my person. Do your thing. I'm doing my thing. Um, I just happen to, I try to schedule things at the same time. So the seller is less inconvenience, but they really do love, love having the home stager there. Cause they feel like, ah, it's, it's, I get to stage my home. You know, it's like, they're, they're, they're excited about that. Right. For everything else. They're like, Oh, I got to show it. But the staging part of it. I feel like they're always excited. Everybody does watch HGTV. That gives them the feeling. That's the one, if I could say a benefit of HGTV, when they go, oh, oh, you'll be doing staging like HGTV? And I'm like, yeah, isn't it great? Everything else, I'm like, it, that's not real. Okay, you don't write an offer and get, it, get an answer within 20 minutes and go 20% below asking and close, you know, an hour later. It's not how real estate works, but. While I have you here and, you know, we're, we're, talking out there to the home savers and real estate agents, what do you think, or what's some tips that you can share that would be the best ways to like collab marketing wise? Like what do agents need? What would they? Uh, right now I've agents need listings <laughs> period. <laughs> More than anything, uh, if you were to say to an agent like, hey, uh, I'm looking to partner with somebody that if I have the opportunity to refer them, if there's a potential for a seller that's thinking about selling their home, I have an exclusive person, but I also want to be their exclusive home stager that represents them on every transaction. So it's a symbiotic relationship, right? We're helping each other out uh, because somebody might, depending on the stager's marketing, somebody might call you first before calling us. And say, hey, I'm thinking about painting. I'm thinking about doing this. I'm doing that. I saw your video on hottest paint choices of 2021. Uh, can you come by and help me? So I think just getting out there and, and recruiting agents that you can help them. You can help maybe leave, maybe find them new listings in the future. But also that you're willing to do video with them. Uh, and, and think of creative ways that you can help them. I think the buyer side is some way that. Uh, stagers don't always look at that. I have purchased a home staging package for, especially first time home buyers, because they're coming from an apartment that was a hodgepodge of things that they collected over the years or parents gave them or friends, you know? And it's like, there's nothing, it's awful, let's be honest. And so, like, being able to come in and you come in and go, oh, I think you should do this, that, and the other thing, um, it's always well received, in my opinion. I think that's something that home stagers, well, I know in our market, they're always thinking about the sales side, but also thinking about thinking about the buyer side and even your existing clients, maybe uh, a client appreciation party or something like that, partnering with agents on that and maybe raffling off uh, a home staging service of, of some kind for existing clients too, because everybody could always yeah. use it. There's, the, what is that? The get to know your clients day once a quarter. Right. We call it the cap client appreciation party. <laughs> Okay. What else? So what should moving forward in the future, now that everyone yeah. is pivoted, they're on video. What like what's next? What's going on in the marketing world that people should take note of? Did you know that you can did you know that you could buy a house with cryptocurrency? What? Do you know who might have predicted that back in 2019? You. 
there there is record of this guy. I I presented at the the National Association of Realtors conference in 2019 in San Francisco. My session was called blockchain or crypto no blockchain cryptocurrency type or history in the making and it was in san francisco of all places they had bitcoin atms in san francisco at the time okay but everybody's like no it'll never happen it's not gonna catch on <laughs> so i think that's while well, that's trending and it's i still think we're a little bit away where nobody's going to provide proof of funds in bitcoin or or any of the other uh crypto right now it's because it's so volatile moves up so quickly unless they're going to cash out and then provide proof of funds that way to purchase something uh, but i think in in the marketing world what we really need to pay attention to is clubhouse man i've only been on for eight days and it's like when you you found the love of your life and you're like oh you're like a little baby come find where, me where, where you been all my life clubhouse hmm? you know <laughs> it's it's so and I thought I would hate it because I love video, right? You love video. So, and yeah, it's like, I did not want to do it either because I was like, I can't. I just cannot add another thing. And I was like, I'm the video girl. It's not happening. And now I host two rooms. Yo, but what, I'm finding you right now. Um, should we do a clubhouse after party? Is that what you're saying? We'll do an impromptu clubhouse <laughs> after party. Okay, that sounds good. Um, get on there. It, it's... And here's what I say. I'm on all the platforms. I, I try to concentrate on Facebook, Instagram the most. Uh, my YouTube is, in, is increasing. But I find that Clubhouse really is the most personal, right? I, I, I don't know if you feel this way, but you connect with people on a more personal level because, like, you're in a room and you're all talking as if you were sitting around a table. Yes. Like, right now, we're in a group live streaming to folks you may comment, you may like this, you may share it. It's not the same kind of interaction as if you're you're in the room, you're hearing my voice, and then you go, hey, Jeremiah, so I got a question. This is Jeremiah, you know, John from New York City, and I got a – there's a different kind of connection there. So I think you should pay attention to that because it's not going away anytime soon. No, it's not. But um, I will say there's a lot of – you got to weed out a lot of stuff to find some of those golden oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good point, but it's so easy. Again, like if it was video, you'd have to go into all these different places and it'd be kind of clunky, but there it's like, I pop into a room and they're like, okay, everybody, let's find our inner. I'm like, this is not my room. I need more hype up in here. Like pff, you leave quietly. You literally peace out, leave quietly. It's too peace out, leave quietly, go to another room. And when you sign up, you have the interest that you sign up for. And when you find a club where you're like, these are my people, this is my jam, you join that club, you follow Tori, you can be notified when she starts a room so that you know that every time she does something, it's going to be something you're interested in. Like that's that's the way to do it. We find actually have um, our room 3 p.m. Eastern staging secrets and systems with myself, Bobby McGrath and Kristen per Peria Pereira. Sorry. Um, so yeah, join us there. And if you don't have Clubhouse yeah. yet, put a comment in and I will send you an invite. Is it 3 p.m. today? 3 p.m. today, yeah. Am I getting invited? <laughs> do, what, do you have a staging? You might, well, you could. You know what? Yes, you need to be invited. What? Be on it's stage. It's an exclusive group, right? You're saying yes. Okay. That's. I'm like... Come on, invite me. What the heck's going yeah, on? Yeah, I actually want you on stage because then you could talk about the importance of consultations. Okay. At I'll stage. tell you what, if I if I roll a one through a six, you're gonna invite me. <laughs> we can't see what oh. you rolled. It's a three. It's a three. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending some time with us here inside the group. Um, thank you, Tori. It's always and a pleasure. sharing some knowledge. Um, talk about bots real quick, because isn't that it's kind of the way for the future? Yeah, if you go to jmanbot.com slash sirbot a lot, that's my bot. Kick them nasty thoughts. Uh, it is the future of, of social media marketing is bots. You will not find somebody who is more advanced right now with real estate bots than me. Uh, again, I presented this last year at NAR. But it's a great way to provide value to your clients in an automated way while still having a personal touch. Today's modern consumer wants information like this. You can go to my bot, 
24 hours a day, seven days a week and get all kinds of resources without ever having to talk to me. And I know we'd like to think that people want to talk to us on a personal level all the time, but that's not today's consumer, right? I spent three weeks getting my new running shoes because I didn't want to go into the running store and talk to a guy and have him get my sneakers and bring them out. Like I'm like, boop, and it took forever to come, but I didn't have to talk to anybody. So yeah. I think that's, uh, you can check it out. We're, we're creating one with Tori uh, for stagers where again, you can provide resources because you'll have two different people, right? Either agents or, or the public. So it's predicted conversations with a personal touch uh, yeah. with the real estate bot. If you're a seller, if you're a buyer, if you go to my speaking page, J man seminars I'm on Facebook, it's J man speaks. Go to equipment.jmanseminars.com. You'll experience the bot with my one sheet and all of my recommended equipment for video. I you love go there, so replies back, done. So really, stagers can utilize this in their own businesses. And oh, it yeah. helps. Yeah, it just helps automate the relationship. Yeah, Build you know, because it's like providing the resources. Nobody wants to be sold. If you want something from me, I give it to you, and then I just like walk away. There you go, Tori. Glad I could help. And and people are so like, wait, wait, wait. What? If, you're not trying to close me or sell me anything. No, no, no. That's not what I do. Need any other? Th you know, need help with anything else? Just let me know. And I walk away again. Well, I got a question about this. Okay, here's a resource for that. Have a great day. And then after a while, they're gonna go. Wait, I want to use you for real estate. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, but it's just add value, add value, add value to that relationship. And they're going to choose you. It's not a closing process anymore. So whether it's a stager working with realtors, realtors working with consumers, stagers working with consumers, you know all the resources, you know all the questions they add. We can build that out for you and, and really take your, your business on social media to the next level. Because on the back end, I can see what people are clicking on. It's the future, but that's a whole other one-hour discussion. <laughs> well, tune in next time. Tune in next time. Yeah. T squared and well, J man. Yes. I love it. That should be a show. <laughs> Sounds like a superhero. T squared and J man to the rescue. Stagers and realtors worldwide need to tune in today. Well, thank you so much for jumping in here today, sharing your knowledge. If anybody wants to find you, Say again where they can find you. Uh, jmanseminars.com is my website, but my link tree is solo.to slash jmanspeaks. I'll put it in the comments. You can find me, jmanspeaks, on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. And now in the club. You can find me in the club. <laughs> cool. You better jump on later. I will. I'll, I'll come in and listen. I'm come scared in. to talk in front of people. No, stop it. Stop it. Uh, well, thank you so much. This has made my Monday fun, thank happy. You. You're comedic. I come in with some content. We created pillars of content today. We got you covered. Um, you. Have a great day, guys. If you have any comments um, or questions, go ahead, put them in the comments below, and we will be sure to get back to you.